particular system in terms of the heart and blood vessel. Okay? And we're going to start here with a uh, artery and the main plan of the artery. This is quite a nice artery, so I didn't want to start you off. You saw me looking through a couple of slides before we got off because I wanted to start you off on a good note. Okay? Now, here we are looking at the one of the mesenteric arteries. This could be the superior or the inferior mesenteric artery. Okay? And uh, juxtaposed to this are some lymph nodes, some mesenteric nodes, and we may also see a vein. That's a large lymph node. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Um, there we see a large um, lymph node, and we see a collapsed vein. Okay? So there you can see a large size vein right here. Okay? Could be, for example, the um, superior mesenteric vein, one of these veins that we see right here. And we notice the collapsed nature of the vein and how thin the wall of the vein is. Okay? And this is juxtaposed to the artery that we see over here. Okay? And that's the artery. And you see that that artery had a, has a nice wide lumen. It's not irregular, it's not collapsed, okay? And generally we can see that there is an outer loose connective tissue layer here. That is the adventitia, okay? And we see that adventitia. And then deep to the adventitia, we see what's referred to as the tunica media, okay? The tunica media. And in here, we see the tunica intima, okay? So those layers are the tunica intima, the tunica media, and the tunica adventitia, okay? And if the vessel is of a large caliber, which we will look at a little later, we'll actually see either small blood vessels, arteries especially, um, running with this artery right here. And that is also to help nourish the wall of the vessel. And these are known as the vessels of the vessels or the vasa vasorum. Okay? So this is a very nice example here of an artery. And uh, there we can see now the uh, internal elastic membrane. Alright? There we're looking now at the internal elastic membrane. Okay. This has a very so this would be a medium, this would be a muscular type artery. Okay? This is a muscular artery, not an elastic artery. So the aorta and some of the commencement of the great vessels. Alright? Okay, these are elastic arteries, especially the aorta. In the exam we will give you the aorta as the elastic artery. Okay? From the elastic artery we go into muscular arteries, okay? Um, they vary. But what we're looking at here now is very nice, the internal elastic membrane. And that internal elastic membrane is that layer that we see looking like a snake. A wavy, wavy layer looking like a snake right here. And it's, it has pores in it. It's pores in it, has little windows in it, that internal elastic membrane. And you can see it's built for expansion. Okay? So Dr. Thomas just sat right beside me. And that's an important first comment he was talking to me about. Okay? So in increased activity, um, with all of these vessels, for example, you see in both is at rest, and then it's at the Olympics, you can imagine these vessels have now opened up wide to, to really provide the muscles with a lot of um, to increase the oxygen supply to the blood. So we therefore need a structure that can respond to increased needs. So the internal elastic membrane, as you see there, is quite um, um, folded up here, and it will allow for expansion. Similarly, the tunica media, the muscles of the tunica media, the smooth muscle is laid down in roughly, not roughly, although it's described as circular, it's spiraling to some degree. So the smooth muscle cells are spiraling to some degree. But let's examine the tunica intima for a while. And right now, 
I have a little lady and she's right near in front of me and she has on a green top. Very good. Her name is Kim. Very good. Now Kim, what are we looking at there now? What's the pointer on right there? Hmm? No, what, what exactly? What's that cell? Oh. And that's the endothelium. So you're looking at one of the endothelial cells. Okay? So the endothelial cells. And these endothelial cells are formed. What type of cells are these endothelial cells? They are squamous. Okay? They are squamous cells. And when we look at a capillary, right down at the other end of the line, all we are reduced to are what? Just an endothelium. An endothelium resting on a basement membrane. So finally, we're going to have to exchange and we're going to be picking up nutrients and there's exchange of molecules, etc. All we're dealing with is an endothelium forming a minute tube of 8 microns in diameter. Just enough if you remember the dimensions of a blood cell red blood cells to allow these red blood cells to pass through in single file. So you look at this elaborate structure and the aorta and if you trace it right down, what you're left with primarily is just the endothelium. Okay? And that endothelium is formed by flattened squamous cells. Okay? And we will see that at the very end of the road there are two types of capillaries fenestrated capillaries and non-fenestrated. Those that have pores, for example, in the choroid plexus, in the intestine, and in the endocrine glands, in parts of the hypothalamus, where we need some exchange of molecules, we're going to have fenestrated. Otherwise, in muscles, etc., these are non-fenestrated. So, at the simplest level of the blood vessel, all you're left back with is what? An endothelium and a little reticular connective tissue around the wall to give a little strengthening. A fine, fine reticulum. Okay? So there are the <coughs> endothelial cells of the tunica intima. Now what this does not show very well, because it's not very well developed in this type of blood vessel, is a subendothelial layer. Okay? There is a subendothelial layer but we would have to look down the electron microscope um, or maybe I'd have to use oil immersion on a slide like this to show you the subendothelial layer. But there is a subendothelial layer there and it is of, um, it is, uh, it's of significance in a number of ways. But there we can see a number of endothelial cells right here resting right there on the internal elastic membrane. But I want to point out that there is a very minute subendothelial layer. And then the innermost part of the um, and then we see now that another component of this tunica intima we said is the internal elastic membrane. So Kim we have three things. One the endothelium, two the subendothelial layer and thirdly the internal elastic membrane. Okay? And these are the three layers of the tunica intima. <coughs> As I said, when this vessel reaches its very end in a capillary bed, all you are left with is the tunica endothelium. Okay, everything else is gone. So there we see now outside here, this is a muscular artery. So we see now that smooth muscle. Okay, so this is the smooth muscle here of the tunica media, okay, and outside of the tunica, and in this tunica media also, there are some elastic fibers, right, but they are, there is an amorphous um, matrix there to some degree, but what we see is that the internal elastics, the elastic fibers are very, very minute, I can see a couple of them, for example, right here, these are some little elastic fibers that we see left back here. Okay? But what we basically get is the smooth muscle basically 